Hello and welcome to this video which is about the e-licenser service closing down in 2025 and how to make sure that you are not going to be left high and dry. So first things first, it's definitely not time to panic. You don't necessarily need to do anything but what you do want to make sure is that all of your ducks are in a row as it were and you're prepared for the future where the service doesn't exist and you won't be able to do a couple of things which you can do at the moment. So just to be clear, this doesn't mean that your dongle will stop working. Everything will keep working as it is, but what will go away is the ability to manage licenses on a dongle, move them between dongles, etc. So we're going to look at a few situations which you'll need to be aware of and how you can deal with them. So first things first, this is the e-licenser control center which gets installed with uh, most Steinberg products and it's where you can see the licenses that you've got on dongles and soft e-licensers. As you can see at the moment, there's no licenses on this computer. There's none on the soft e-licenser. I've never made use of that. I've only ever really used dongles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to plug in a dongle which has got everything upgraded. So this is the kind of thing you'll see if you're an older Cubase user, maybe if you had Cubase 11 or 10 or whatever, and you've upgraded since, this is what you should be seeing. So as you can see, all of these licenses say upgraded to Steinberg licensing. That means that all of these have been moved to the new system. You can still use the dongle, which is slightly confusing. So if I wanted to run Cubase Pro 11 or any of these versions of software here, I could use them without using Steinberg licensing, but using the e-licenser. So this is one of the things which is slightly confusing to people. I think the reason why you have these licenses marked like this is so you can't sell it without somebody realizing they wouldn't be able to upgrade it. So if it wasn't marked like this, I'd be able to sell this dongle with a Cubase 11 license on, which wouldn't be upgradable because it's, it's already been upgraded as it were. And then the person would have been, you know, ripped off effectively. So I think that's why these exist and for backwards compatibility. So you can leave it on an old computer, etc. So effectively, you've got two licenses. You've got one which is stuck in the past on an e-licenser and you've got your current one. If you're in this situation and all of your licenses say this and you've done all this, then you're good to go. It doesn't matter what happens to your dongle. You would be able to use a newer version. You can double check this in the Steinberg Activation Manager or in your licenses online. So for instance, here we are in the Steinberg Activation Manager and you can see that Amped Electra license here is the Amped Electra license, which is here. So all of these licenses have been upgraded. I'm good to go. Everything's fine. So that's the best case scenario if you're an older Cubase user or Steinberg software user rather but you've done all your upgrades. Let's take a look at a different situation. So here we have a dongle which has got one thing which has been upgraded, which is Dorico, because that moved on. That was the first thing to have Steinberg licensing. But then I've got these other licenses here which have not been upgraded. And they are not upgradable. So these licenses, because they are old, are stuck effectively in e-licenser land. So if I was using any of these and wanted to keep using them, then I would need to make sure that my dongle is working, is happy, etc. Because while I will still be able to use them after 2025, that will only be the case providing the dongle doesn't fail. And that does occasionally happen, as we will see in a bit. But... If you're in this situation, then the thing you probably need to do is to check this list on screen. So this list shows software, which is slightly confusing again. So there are two versions of it available. You can have it running on an e-licenser, but you can also sort of air quote upgrade it to running on Steinberg licensing, even though it's the same version. So these versions on screen, Backbone, Groove Agent 5.2, Patch Shop, Retrolog, etc. These can also be switched to Steinberg licensing. So they'll be the same version, but they will be on Steinberg licensing. So that's what you can do. And you do that in your Steinberg account. So if you log into your Steinberg account, you will see vouchers, looks like gifts, etc. 
If you click on that, you will see vouchers that you can redeem. Now here, the vouchers that I've got on screen are from a previous promotion. I've actually redeemed all of them, but you would see them here. You basically click the redeem button, follow the instructions on screen, and then they will be upgraded to Steinberg licensing. So you'll get a code that you need to put into eLicenser. So here you would have an activation code. You'd enter the activation code. So you'd click this here, you'd paste that in, and then it would say Wave Lab 11 upgraded to Steinberg licensing. Follow that, and then you would be good to go. So you would follow this here. And once you've done that process, then the license will appear in your Steinberg activation manager. You can activate it. You can unplug the dongle and you'll be good to go. You'll end up with a license that looks like this. So it will say whatever version it is and then upgraded to Steinberg licensing. Unfortunately, I don't have one I can show you because I've upgraded all my products already and I didn't screen cap it foolishly. Did it quite a while ago. But that's the process. And then you will end up with a license that looks like this rather than without it at the end. Then we have the third category of programs. So on screen, there's a list of programs which are not upgradable to Steinberg licensing. So these are the ones where if you are using this, you will need to be a bit precautionary and self-reliant. Say so this isn't a cause for alarm. I've got dongles here which worked for years and years and I, I took them with me. I was plugging them into systems all the time. So generally they are pretty reliable. But if you've got one that's a bit dodgy or it's an older one, as seen on screen, then I would take the time, spend the 20 quid or so to buy a new dongle, the little short dongles, which are much faster and have got more memory on them. And then make sure you've transferred your licenses over to that new dongle, because that's going to give you the best chance of it keeping running. What's not going away is the e-licenser software. So you will still have this software on your computer, it will still authorize it. So even if you're using you know, a really old version of Cubase. I've got some here somewhere. I've got, I think, Cubase SX2 on a dongle. Oh, no, better than that. I've got Cubase VST32.5. So this is from a long, long time ago. So you can see that license there. So it would be possible somehow for me to, if I could get hold of that, I would still be able to run that version of the software if I could somehow get it running with an old version of eLicenser Control Center and a very old version of Windows, etc., I don't have access to that. I'm not sure I'd see the point of that. I think I threw away all my boxes during the pandemic when I had a big clear out. But if you've got an older version of the software, as long as you've got eLicenser Control Center and your dongle is in good condition and all working, then you are fine. But let's take a look at what happens when your dongle doesn't work so here, during the uh, planning for this video, I dragged out all my dongles. I've got too many for reasons I won't go into, but this dongle here, when I plug this in, look at what happens on screen. Yeah, this is what's happening. So the light on the dongle is very bright. It's not pulsing like it does normally. And it just goes around like this. It would do this forever. So this dongle has failed. Um, I was always fairly good at registering my dongle. So this dongle has actually got a license for Cubase SX3 on there and it's dead. If this was my only license and this was in the future, let's say sometime in 2025, then I would be in a case where my life jacket is back at the airport and there's no way for me to recover this. Obviously, Steinberg's support may do a one-on-one -on -one thing where they would give you the option to upgrade to Steinberg licensing, but it's it's going to be, you know, something that you don't want to have to do. So I would strongly encourage you to, if you've got any doubts about the, the lifespan of your dongle, to get a new dongle, get transferred, because what you don't want to do sometime in 2025 is get into this sort of a situation and then be presented with an upgrade that you don't want and will be potentially pretty expensive. I'm not sure how expensive it is, upgrading from SX3, I'd imagine it's basically, you may as well just buy a new license anyway. Now, my final tip for making sure whether or not you are prepared is kind of an obvious one, really. What I would say is unplug all of your dongles and then try running the software that you normally use and open up your projects and just see if you really are in a position where you don't need the dongles anymore. Because if you think you are, but actually it turns out some of the sounds that you use aren't, 
So for instance, the, the auto glockenspiel here, let's say you're using this and this all the time. If it's on a dongle, yeah, okay, at the moment it, you're good, but you may want to see if you can prepare for the future. And if you've got any of the licenses, as we saw earlier on, which you can change to Steinberg licensing for free, probably better to do it now than later because then you're not going to have any problems dealing with support who probably will be overwhelmed as soon as the system goes offline that's normally what happens with new product releases or the retiring of anything yeah it becomes problematic so hopefully this has cleared up any questions that you've got about that and planning for the future they say this isn't something you need to worry about right now but it's something you factor in over the next six months and thinking about product upgrades etc and obviously later on in the year, there's always deals towards the end of the year in terms of upgrade pricing and this, that and the other. So it may be something you want to factor in as well and think, ah, you know what, I'm going to do it just because that will let me do that. And with all of this, typically you've been able to run older versions of the software anyway. So even if you're happy running an earlier version and you're comfortable doing it and maybe you're uncomfortable with the new version, you don't like it for whatever reason, you can still run that earlier version even though you're on a later version on Steinberg licensing. As ever, hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon for more music tech tuition.